The urban fabric of San Francisco is changing rapidly. There are many new skyscrapers in the city, including the new Salesforce Tower, which is one of the tallest buildings in San Francisco. Some of these projects cost over a billion dollars and cover large sections of downtown and the waterfront like the new Warrior Stadium. And of course there are countless smaller projects being built throughout the city. These projects are creating a huge demand for construction materials. One of the most critical materials is concrete. Concrete is needed for foundations, floors, podiums, sidewalks, and streets. It is often the first stage of construction as the massive building foundations and parking structures are poured. One concrete truck holds about 10 cubic yards of concrete. It takes approximately 800 truckloads of concrete to pour the foundations for a large office building. In San Francisco, the cement plant industry is located on Pier 92 in southeast San Francisco. The plants located there are composed of mixing, loading, and sand storage facilities. To make concrete, sand is mixed with cement and other materials and then dropped into trucks for delivery. During this process, sand is released into the air, along with other materials associated with making concrete. Particulate emissions are also released from the truck diesel engines, and the truck also kicks up a considerable amount of dust. Our inspection of Pier 92 indicated that there were many particulates in the area. We consequentially decided to take air measurements around the batching plants to see what level of emissions are created on Pier 92 and whether these particulates can be affecting the nearby Bayview community. In June of 2018, we took our first measurements as we surveyed the pier using PM10, PM2.5, and PM1 monitors. During a normal workday, our samples have shown that PM levels exceed 140 micrograms per cubic meter of PM2.5 particulates in the central plant mixing and sand hauling area. This is considered unhealthy air by the EPA. The Lancet Science Magazine recently published a report that correlates the onset of diabetes with particulate emissions. The study's disease threshold applies to emission levels exceeding 10 micrograms per cubic meter. A review of San Francisco health statistics show that Bayview has the second highest incidence of diabetes hospitalizations in the city. Our readings have shown that average particulate levels in the Bayview neighborhood adjacent to Pier 92 consistently have over 10 micrograms per cubic meter and are often as high as 40 plus micrograms per cubic meter. At Young Blood Park, which is a local soccer and sports field, we have registered 50 plus micrograms per cubic meter on our survey day, well above the threshold established by the Lancet study. Other studies have shown that autoimmune diseases such as arthritis, lupus, and MS have increased in prevalence worldwide. While genetic predisposals play a role, environmental factors are a major contributor. Relative to air pollution, particulate matter is so harmful that there is no apparent threshold of safety or level for which exposure is safe and extensive research has found that even small changes in PM2.5 could result in significant health impacts. Even short-term increases in exposure of PM2.5 pose health concerns for those exposed. These health impacts are in addition to the more commonly known impacts of air pollution in humans such as asthma, emphysema, and other lung diseases. Because problems need solutions, we recommend the following changes. Number one, cover the sand stocks on barges and aggregate lots along with all conveyors. This will stop sand from blowing away. Number two, cover the sand delivery trucks with tarps. These trucks are currently uncovered and the sand blows out of the truck into the air. Number three, keep truck traffic speeds down. Many trucks seem to drive at prudent speeds. Some trucks drive at twice the average speed causing particulate rates to more than double. Number four, Periodically water the roadway. The existing machine that cruises the area is not sufficient for controlling dust. Number five, regulators should take periodic air samples measuring PM2.5, PM1, and PAHs, a known carcinogen. PM1 is rarely monitored but can travel long distances due to its small size. New buildings are vital to a growing economy, but we need to understand what impacts construction activity has on residents in the surrounding areas. Resolving the impacts of this site would be inexpensive and fast, however it requires constant monitoring.